Samuel L. Jackson. When KTLA reporter Sam Rubin asked Samuel L. Jackson about a Super Bowl commercial he was in, mistaking him for actor Lawrence Fishburne, the interview was effectively over. Did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? Although he attempted to track back to the intended Robocop promo, Rubin was well aware of what he'd done, saying after the interview, That is a tape now that I believe is now going to have a life I, all I of think its own. You're oh. right. But in a separate interview of his own, Fishburne told Strombo he actually gets mistaken for Jackson all the time. Woman from Texas came up and interrupted the interview. And, I don't mean to bother you, but I can. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Jackson? Fishburne did what any self-respecting star would do, saying, I wrote, you know, blah, 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 Sam Jackson. Yeah. Fortunately, Fishburne is a good sport about the whole thing. People used to confuse Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman. It's not a bad problem to have. Not at all. Robert Downey Jr. UK reporter Krishnan Guru Murthy, who's made a name for himself as a button pusher, got on Robert Downey Jr.'s bad side in 2015 by digging up Downey's widely known rocky past. I don't know how comfortable you are. You know, talking talking about yourself at the moment. You I mean, have as much time as anyone else will. After a series of awkwardly personal questions about Downey's so-called dark times, Downey had had enough. I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? The normally congenial star abruptly ended the interview, calling Guru Murthy a schmuck on his way out the door. It's just getting a little dinosaur in your... No, 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 look, I don't want to do that. During a later Howard Stern appearance, the actor was less diplomatic when reliving the uncomfortable moment, saying of Guru Murthy... You know what? You're weirding me out. You are a bottom-feeding muckraker. He then added... That is more than likely a syphilitic parasite. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to distance myself from this clown. To add insult to injury, the tense interview with Guru Murthy occurred during a press event for Avengers Age of Ultron, during which news outlets were reportedly allotted five to ten minute slots with the stars for the expressed purpose of promoting the film. We're pretty sure Marvel would rather have the tentpole star of its cinematic universe talking about how cool it is to be Iron Man, instead of, say, the time he got arrested for heroin possession. Quentin Tarantino Krishnan Guru Murthy got himself pummeled with return fire from director Quentin Tarantino after attempting to draw a corollary between violent films, like Tarantino's and mass shootings. But why it's okay to go into a movie and enjoy the violence? Yeah, well, it's a movie. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's not real life. The interview took place during promotion for the director's Django Unchained, which has no shortage of violence. When Guru Murthy repeatedly attempted to discuss a potential correlation... But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence. Tarantino replied, Don't ask me a question like that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not biting. I refuse your question. For his part, Tarantino made it abundantly clear that he'd already spoken on the subject at length since the start of his career, and that his only intention for Guru Murthy's interview was to sell his movie. His final response on the matter? I'm so shutting your butt down. I'm not Jesse Eisenberg. While promoting Now You See Me, Jesse Eisenberg sat down with Romina Puga for a segment of the show, Say My Name. He must have somehow thought he was back on the set of The Social Network because he was in full Zuckerberg mode, rapid-firing insults, even encouraging Puga to cry by saying, You were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. I'm gonna go cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over, because um, okay. otherwise I'll look like it was res I'm responsible for it. At first, their banter seemed playful and maybe even an attempt at wry humor. But in just under three minutes, Eisenberg ended up looking like a bully. I said your name into camera. What else do you want from me? Puga even edited the segment to end with her final thoughts. Such a jerk. Yeah. Even then, fans wondered if it was a failed gag or an actual train wreck of an interview. Puga answered that question with a Tumblr post that confirmed Eisenberg was indeed not very nice. She wrote, When the five-minute interview, more like self-esteem butchering, was finally over, I went behind a curtain to wait for the memory cards from the interview. I peeked around the curtain to ask Jesse about his neighborhood in New York, and he immediately says, You're still here? Cara Delevingne There were several factors at play that turned actress Cara Delevingne's Good Day Sacramento appearance into the perfect storm of interview awkwardness. First, there was her introduction as Carla. Carla Delevingne is in the movie. She joins us live from New York City to talk about Paper Towns. Cara, good morning! Then, along with a satellite delay that blew any attempts at jokes, the Good Day hosts asked vaguely insulting questions like this one. Did you get a chance to read it, or do you even have time to sit and read? <laughs> These days you're so busy. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. By just under the three-minute mark, it was the interviewers, sensing what they thought was attitude coming from De Levine, who decided to throw in the towel. We'll let you go then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> 
the satellite feed was cut, and the host decided Carla's bad mood was the problem. She oh. was in a mood! De Levine took to Twitter in her own defense, writing, Some people just don't understand sarcasm or the British sense of humor. Vin Diesel. Wondering about the creepiest possible way a male celebrity can have a conversation with a female interviewer? Vin Diesel's got your answer. My God, I love her. Look how beautiful she is. Thank you. God, wow, man. So Diesel actually professed his inappropriate love several times while speaking with YouTube personality Carol Moreira to promote Triple X, Return of Xander Cage. God, you're so beautiful. God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> am I right or wrong? Look at her. Thank you. How am I supposed to do this interview? Moreira later told E! News, I did not like it. At the time, I did not know how to react, but you will see that I was uncomfortable. It was not nice that he interrupted my work. Diesel's best attempt at an apology was to post the uncut version of the interview on Facebook, writing, As you all know, I try to keep my interviews playful and fun, especially when I am in the Xander zone. But if I offended anyone, then let me apologize, because that is never my intention. Need an added layer of gross to the story? Diesel did all of this in spite of having a longtime girlfriend, Paloma Jimenez, with whom he shares two daughters. Bruce Willis Unfortunately for UK radio personality Jamie Edwards, his morning show enthusiasm was no match for Bruce Willis's well-known pretension when it came to an uncomfortable promotional interview for Red 2. Alongside Mary Louise Parker, Willis approached each of Edwards' questions with an increasing level of boredom and disgust. I can imagine you doing like the whole Route 66 thing one day. I'm thinking about driving right now. I can hardly keep my mind on this interview. Afterward, Edwards explained to HLN that he was simply trying to get a soundbite to use for promotional purposes for his radio station. He got it when Willis, out of the blue, made a joke about ending his own life. So how would you sell me the film then? How, what would you say that is I the would, best part about the film? I would slash my hooves. But hey, no interview is a bad interview when it comes to going viral. Chelsea Handler Comedian and talk show host Chelsea Handler isn't one to hold back, and she certainly pulled no punches during a 2014 interview with Piers Morgan when she literally told the British host, You're a terrible interviewer. And the awkwardness only grew from there during the curiously amicable interview. Handler repeatedly slagged Morgan over everything from his short attention span to his unfunny Twitter. You're so funny sometimes. You think you're, like, you're so funny sometimes I forget to laugh. <laughs> to his decision to end the whole thing by showing her footage of George Zimmerman signing autographs at a gun show. Thank you. Thanks for uh, ending it, it, on such a high note. Try and end on a smile, something nice. You're so handsome. That'll do. But the whole interview was overshadowed by the announcement one month prior that Morgan's show was being canceled just three years after taking over for his longtime CNN predecessor, Larry King. And in case you're wondering, Handler brought that up too. When Morgan protested that he only stops paying attention to his guests when they're uninteresting, Handler said, Well, maybe that's why your job is coming to an end. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.